I tell you what, this is the sort of heat that actually I kind of really wanted all along. It, it's been really good. We've had pretty much constant war, cities being taken, the computer hasn't really suffered many of its problems, except from like a couple of settlers bugging out at the start, but really, if that's the worst of it, then, you know, we'll take that. It, it's It's been a really good heat so far. I've really enjoyed it. And Mapushi is actually managing to retain this city, which is exceptional. I mean, okay, Rebellion in five turns. For a second, the loyalty was actually increasing. I don't know how they did that, but yeah, very good. Oh, watching the computer actually use siege weaponry properly is one of my favourite things about uh, Civ 6 AI only battles. It happens so rarely that it's uh, it's just really fun when it happens. And look, Frankfurt's walls taken down already. This is the computer is very effective against cities without walls. If it can just take the walls out, generally speaking, the you know the city can be taken with minimal effort. And yeah, look at this Germany really stacking the pike and shots on the border against musketmen. That's just it's not going to work. We were wondering, you know, will Mapushi keep these three cities alive and well? The answer, no. They're going to go after them. And these city gifts, oh, they're so good. Each are going to rebel in two turns and Mapushi's going to pick both of these up. They are quickly becoming the biggest empire. And, and generally speaking, their, their, their ability to wage war, on, especially on the border with their, with their units here. Oh, look at that. Yeah, look, Mapushi forcing the Congo city. Here we go. Congo making peace with Mapushi. They forced that rebellion using their ability. That's the first time I've actually seen Mapushi as an AI do that. And they're so fun to play as for a, as like, a, like an actual person playing Civ 6. Their ability is just really good fun. Just running, running raiding units in, causing all the cities to flip and then running away. It's really good fun. But look at this, Germany is really beginning to fall. Just fold from all fronts. Maybe the Empire was just too big. They can't get all the... They're just not enough troops and they can't get them to all the front lines quickly enough. Australia beginning to take Mainz. They're beginning to take Frankfurt. Beginning this city. Almost surrounded now. Although they have just built walls rapidly. Unfortunately for, for uh, Australia there. This is such a good mountain. It is natural wonder here. So if you, if you have one tile of this you get two great points from merchants and generals I think. You don't even have to work it, just have one in your empire. I'm surprised, I mean if I was playing Esma Pushi, I would have just bought one tile. Just claim it, get done with it. Oh, that's a shame actually. Mapushi could have done really well out of this. It's two turns, it's gonna flip, probably to them, but the Congo are gonna steal it back. Yeah, and loyalty is gonna keep it now. That was a shame for them, but yeah. M I mean, Mapushi have done pretty well so far in war with, I'm kind of expecting this bombard to come in and start pelting German cities. Mapushi really needed to take the Congo out, and the Congo do have the smallest empire. The science is not going to be out of, they're not going to stay in the game for the entire game. I, I think sometimes the Congo can survive quite well because they normally get converted religiously. And generally speaking, the AI doesn't like to take out Serbs that follow its own religion. It wants to keep them alive for the religious victory, so it's interesting. I don't know whether or not Germany will, well, sorry, I don't know whether uh, Mapushi will go for the Congo. But Jim, if they did go for them, huge borders, just a little city on the coast here that could easily be taken, there's then in this one here, Puen Mapu, uh, that would easily go down. I always love that moment in the game where you get your first inventory. You could just, yeah, I mean look at all these pike and shots, you could just walk that inventory in. 50 strength pike and shots against 70 strength inventory and the inventory gets plus 10 against pike and shot, so 80 against 50, that's a one hit kill. It would generally be in if we could just walk through. It would be so much fun. Oh, just get like three or four of those. You could surround these cities. You wouldn't even need siege equipment. 51 strength to get with inventory? Nah, easily take. Australia is weirdly struggling at the moment against Germany. They just don't seem to be able to get any traction. And they're sending cavalry units against Pike and Sharp, which isn't not great. Not great, Germany don't seem to want to use anything that isn't pike and shot. Maybe maybe they can't use musketmen because they haven't got any nitre? But I feel like Germany with an empire of this size would have nitre, so... Yeah, who knows about that one. Oh, Mapushi lost that city. Oh, that's a shame. That's a shame. Well, it is a shame because it means Mapushi's attention is going to be drawn somewhere else for a little bit. And I really wanted Mapushi to go after somebody, but with the three city around, it's unlikely they will. Which is a bit of a shame. But there we go. Australia had a good long think and they thought you know what we haven't given enough cities to Mapushi let's just let's just put one over here just 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 to make sure they've got enough we we just can't we just 
got to be careful here. Mapushi, they are our friends. We've got that's three cities, three cities. Australia has settled right on top of Mapushi now. They are. It's just the biggest handout you could imagine. Well, that war with Germany and Mapushi has probably been ticking off uh, 50 turns. Germany, they get their city back eventually. I think Germany, yeah, they did well out of that. But this threes up Mapushi and. They've got inventory units, the Congo still don't have anything that could combat that. Generally speaking, the Congo still very weak, so will Mapushi take the advantage here and go for the Congo? Are they waiting for the Congo to hit a golden age? Is that what it is? Or maybe maybe Mapushi's just got other priorities. Maybe Mapushi just know they don't have to do anything, because Australia just gonna keep giving them cities. Although actually no, this this Australian city to be fair does look like it's going to it's gonna stay part of Australia. There's got to be at least one. Just looking at this, there's, what, wonder here, 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 natural wonder. They generally put a holy site in this direction, but could you imagine if that was a theatre square? The culture adjacency would be insane off that thing. Like, really cool. Ah, the war we kind of wanted to happen. Mapushi are doing it. They're going after the Congo. We're going to watch some inventory just run over Pike and Shot. I, I was really hoping they'd do this, and actually, they're even bringing siege equipment. What is this? Oh, Mapushi, you tease. You teasers. If, if, they get, you know, if they get the act together here, they play their cards right. They could be looking at a Congo wipeout. They've got that technological advantage. I mean, I, I don't think that's going to happen because, quite honestly, the computer just mucks it up every time. But, but you can dream. You can always dream. Oh, and if Auckland thought they were safe in this, nope. Apparently Germany and the Congo were still at war, which is very confusing because neither has sent any troops at the other for, or forever. And Germany is still at war with Australia. I haven't shown you this in probably about 30 turns because, well, nothing's happening. Neither side is capable of doing anything at the moment. They're just, Germany are happy to defend, Australia are happy just to throw troops, not only at the front cities, but then run them through and try and attack the second wave of cities before they've dealt with the first. Which is... An interesting tactic. You know, I'm not entirely sure how Mapushi have mucked this up, but it's the Congo pushing. And they are gonna take that oh no, I say that. Yep, it's another piece. It's okay, it's okay. Mapushi can they can they can gather themselves, go a second time. Maybe. You know, suddenly, as I look at Australia, they where is the army? I mean, they've got a lot of great people, but there is barely any army here, and Germany have got anti-tank crews now, which is tough. Uh, actually, Australia do have submarine armadas, that's fair enough, and now the Congo is going after Germany as well. Now, I still have unique units. There's a swordsman against anti-tank crews. I mean, doesn't matter how good your, your unique unit is, can it beat a bazooka? Chances are, the answer is no. One of the game's biggest mysteries is this. Australia have just been intent on building an armada, just here, for most of the game. Like, maybe it's because they think they still have this city for whatever reason, Perth or Melbourne, I'm not entirely sure, but they've literally just had a navy here for forever. That's all Australia are doing with its production, is just building frigates and dumping them here. Why would you do that? What is to be gained here? Maybe they just want to look at Perth. They're really desperate just to say, you know what? No, Perth is ours. Mapushi going after Germany. Oh, I kind of wanted to see Mapushi go after the Congo again while the Congo was distracted with Germany. But nope, Germany is now at war with all three main players. Will they be able to hold? Will this city, will this, who's this city going to go through? Hamburg. Oh, did Australia lose that? No, Germany lost that one. I can't remember if Australia took it. Oh, Australia and Germany make peace. Well, Germany desperate for peace there. The 2000 year war finally comes to an end. The game has uh, reached that really messy stage where it's about 1070 and no Civ can really get a grip on any of the others. Congo and Germany at war, Mapushi and Germany at war. Uh, Australia is kind of at peace with everybody at the moment. I, I would like to think it's building up its army and yeah, it does have a couple of tank armies, but generally speaking, it's because this navy is over here. Germany making peace with the Congos. Well, kind of expected. Congo do have quite the quite the air force actually. If they use that well, that would be quite fun. Australia are going to give it another go. Third war and they, they have very few troops on the borders here. Like very few. Is Germany... Could Germany push? 
could they counter? This is the question. Oh, no, I say that, but just an artillery army just uh, almost one-hitted the walls of Germany's capital there, so maybe not. Well, you know what? I take it all back. Australia, it, I mean, my god, they've even got tanks around it. I mean, Germany's entire army is made of anti-tank crews, so maybe the choice of tanks wasn't the wisest. I mean, look at that. They've now got the city to zero health. Can Australia finally take the capital here? Will they sneak in and take this city that Mapushi has been going to war with for so long? It's, it's difficult to say. I kind of, I kind of really want to see Australia pull this one off. That would be, that would be really spectacular because you can't help but feel that Germany would capitulate if that's it. Oh no, no, the tanks are off to go and take that city instead. Yep, just leave the capital with zero health. Have no melee troops near it. That's fine. Germany, why don't you just leave your units on the border? Don't even bother going to Hamburg. It's not even worth it. Not even worth your time. Oh wow, do you, do you need any more airports? Was there really any need to have three airports next to each other like that? <laughs> Just build a bigger airport on one tile. I mean, forgot. Oh my god, look at that 20 population city here from Mapushi. That's a, that's a lot of population. Oh, 24. Oh, I take that back. They've got an even bigger one. Gee, is that the biggest city on the map? I can see 22. The Congo I've got over there. Germany, just no population at all. Yeah, they don't even care about population. And then Canberra, what's their 16? So Australia doesn't even have it as well. Well, there we go. That's probably why these two are doing so well scientifically. But yeah, tough, tough. Mechanized infantry from Mapushi. Oh, just go for those anti-tank crews. Honestly, they wouldn't be able to stop you. Well, yeah, Mapushi and Congo are actually at war after all that. So yeah, I wasn't even joking. They did it. Australia actually did it. My God. Germany's capital falls. Now, what will happen? Will Australia overreach? Will they be able to actually coherently attack a second city? Because these artillery armies are tough. Really tough. And Germany might lose a lot of troops going after their capital here with 97 strength walls. If those anti-tank crews just run in, they're going to do nothing. No. No, Australia will instead take peace. They've got the capital. They, and, and actually this city as well. Oh, Germany had to trade a city. In fact, Germany traded... No, they have just settled this one down there. Okay, okay, so Germany did trade a city away to Australia. Wow, that's tough. They were that desperate for peace. But you, you can't help but feel like if Australia can keep the loyalty of that city, which, being honest, actually keeping the loyalty of both cities is going to be tough. All they're going to do is just move their army into this little space and be able to attack all of these cities. Like if they took this one here, Munster, nothing Germany could do about these two. They'd be completely isolated. Every time I feel like this war is revving up, Congo and Mapushi, they just go to peace again. Maybe Mapushi is just extorting loads of gold. There's like a 200 gold per turn deal going on there, maybe. Who knows, but to my knowledge, the world is currently at peace. Which is an interesting one, because Yevren has fallen, and Mapushi having genuine loyalty issues, and just this three city coast. It's amazing, this is like Slaver's Bay from Game of Thrones. Just three cities, all by themselves, very happy. Well, Australia's submarines, nuclear submarines, ruin the party, probably. Should Congo have gone to war with Germany? Probably not. Does Congo have any troops on the border? Nope. Go on Germany, just show the Congo how bad a move that was. That is the only problem with the loyalty system. The computer just can't, can't deal with that. Australia do all that work to get those two cities and no, they just fall. I mean, what's it like for Germany, their capital? rebelling, un uncontrolled, but mm, yeah, that would never help. At least Berlin's over here anyway. That's uh, it's not as bad. How this three city state here is retaining loyalty with a 20 population city almost next to it, I will never know. Like this loyalty system sometimes just makes no sense whatsoever. Oh wow, that's um, that's a slight problem. Just modern armor, barbarians randomly in the middle. Oh my goodness. Oh my god, what is happening here? Mapushi, just sort it out. Use your cavalry against modern armor. Yeah, that'll work. That'll really work. Well, this game started so brilliantly, and being quite honest, it's very much ended in a whimper. It, it's difficult to know who to put through, just because of so much sort of weirdness, but we can do this in sort of reverse order. Now, Saivia, unfortunately, <laughs> yeah, these guys aren't going to go through for for obvious reasons. No, no, stop declaring war. I've, I've 
this is it too late? It's too late. You don't have any troops on the borders. Just stop it. The Congo, who I mean, they did get a little bit squished, but they could have they could have just done something much earlier. They had a bugged settler. They didn't really go after anybody. They kind of got yeah very squished. I, I can't really put the Congo through just because yeah. It just really struggled a little bit. And Germany, as good as they were, taking over Saivia, I, I just can't forgive an empire that'll just willingly lose not only its capital, but then trade away a city in a peace deal to Australia. That's poor. That's very poor. So the Congo and Germany don't go through. Now, the question is, out of Mapushi on Australia, who goes through? The thing that impresses me about Mapushi was the fact they had a bug settler. I think they got to maybe... They had one city, I think, when then Germany maybe, or Saivia maybe had four or five. It was a really good, you know, just a proof that having a bug settler doesn't necessarily mean you're out of the game. Now, I've liked Mapushi's ability to wage war. They've taken over three city-states. They settled nicely. They took out Norway. Uh, at some stage, they took out the capital of Saivia. Like, they moved all the way up here, although they did then lose it to loyalty eventually, as all things do eventually. Generally speaking, Mapushi have been have been nice. We even saw them get to do their their city flip thing, which was really cool. And Australia have they've been doing all right, to be honest. They they kind of went to war with Germany. They did take the capital at one point, but really they haven't. They just had this border the whole game, and they haven't really done much. So my heart's telling me to put Mapushi through. Uh, let me know in the comments. Would you put the same people through for the same reasons? I'm I'm pretty happy that Mapushi would do represent themselves well in the final. We do also have some wild cards, so I've got three winners of the semi-finals that have all gone through now. Uh, and I'll probably put two extra people through to a final of five, so... Oh, I'm looking forward to that. That should be really good. It'll be a final. We push it to turn 250. Hopefully we'll see a couple of nukes flying around, at the very least. What's the thing about the AI mod, the AI Plus mod, it, it generally slows down the rate in which computers tech. Something I've really noticed, the, the, the general base game techs a lot more. I'm tempted to the next World Cup we do, I'm, I'm going to take the AI Plus mod off, see, see how the computer's doing, because apparently, according to Civ, they've really improved the AI of the game so far. I, I'm, not, I'm not entirely sure I believe it, but, you know, we'll give them the benefit of the doubt. But until the final next time, thank you very much for watching, guys, and I shall see you later. Bye!